runaway train Just to feel alive again Pushing forward through the night Aching chest and blurry sight It's so far, so far away It's so far, so far away Cold wind blows into the skin Can't believe the state you're in It's so far, so far away It's so far, so far away Who are you trying to impress? Steadily creating a mess Just to feel alive again After one year on the North Coast, it was time to go home. I'd been in a self-imposed purgatory in North Queensland, hiding out from the tiresome tribulations of big city life. It had been a while since I'd lived in a real house with walls made of wood instead of canvas and a shower with a door that prevented people peeking in while you're at your most intimate. Indeed, the house was quaint. The Queensland standard raised with high roofs and bright white walls and strangely shaped rooms that were added as afterthoughts throughout the building's probably almost 100 year existence. Utilitarian and basic, sure, but oddly charming nonetheless, just like Queensland itself. Sometimes basic is all you need. What wild joy can be found confiding in the folk that know you best? There's never anyone that will know you better than the people who've known you your whole life and there's scarcely anything so heinous you could do that they would stop supporting you. Even if you run away for a year with little explanation other than I was sad and I felt like it, they still welcome you back with open arms and a grin a mile wide. You pick up friends wherever you go, but the special ones will always be there. And you know they're special because activities with them include mundane tasks like fixing sinks. You don't fix someone's sink unless you love them. Not unless you're a plumber anyway, but who the hell would want to do that? After all, pipes are best plumbed with love, not money, and the only currency in this transaction is lifelong friendship. Freedom isn't free and fun is an unfortunately expensive thing. I was having far more of it than I could afford and after a few weeks it became obvious that my savings were in dire need of replenishment. With few other qualifications, I had to use anything I had at my disposal to make ends meet and driving tow trucks was the first thing I stumbled upon. I liked the idea of getting paid to drive around all day and people with heavy vehicle licenses like me tend to be in high demand. I certainly didn't realise it at the time, but for reasons I became aware of later, even truck drivers don't want to be tow truck drivers. The learning curve for becoming a towie is really more of a learning hiccup than anything. The main tenet of being good at your job is ensuring that the car you've just strapped onto the tray doesn't fall off the back of your truck. If you can master that, you're good as gold. There's an old saying in the industry, if the cars aren't braking, it's time for some baking. Now, what can I say, tow truck drivers aren't the most creative bunch. As the hours pass, you can watch people as they go about their business. The retirees exercising their dogs probably don't think twice about the life of a towie. The lawyers striding along the esplanade probably couldn't care less. The Ibis is only interested in finding bins to tear apart. Even in an enormous yellow truck, you can sit anywhere and be almost invisible. What you do is none of anybody else's concern. 
The sun will set every day just as it always does and the moon will rise and wax and wane irrespective of whatever menial task you're performing. As dusk beckons, you'll go back to the depot, fill up your truck, clean it of the dirt and grime that has accumulated over the day and then go back home to rest your weary head. The next day, you'll wake up and do it all over again. After a few weeks of being a tow truck driver, I was bored shitless and I began to search for comfort in the little things. Either that or it was the beginnings of insanity, but either way, it's no small feat keeping an idle brain satisfied. I started trying to make friends outside my usual group of big brain hominids and as it turns out, wild animals are fairly easy to make friends with provided you offer them food. I became a keen bird watcher and slowly I learned how to become one with the avians. Wherever I was, they'd keep a close eye on me. That is, at least until I had no more scraps of KFC left. Nevertheless, it was nice to have the company, even if it was fleeting and slightly judgmental. Oh, ew. <laughs> it's funny how much amusement children are able to garner from large machines. Whenever I had the spare time, I would often visit my nephew and, like most kids, he was utterly enamoured with the truck that I drove. If only I were able to harness some of his wonderment, I might actually have been able to enjoy the job myself. <laughs> yeah. uh, enjoy the truck, mate. This is as fun as I ever yet. I promise you that. Nothing lasts forever, as they say. But nothing good, anyway. If I were fortunate enough to have a chance to visit the people I care about, it wouldn't take long before I was whisked away to help some poor misguided sod get their car off the road. On this occasion, less than an hour after hanging out with my young nephew, I was risking my life towing someone's Nissan off the highway at the very precipice of peak hour. When you're lying next to a two-ton SUV tying a strap around the steering arm while cars and trucks are whizzing past you nonchalantly at 100 kilometers an hour, completely unperturbed as to whether or not they hit you, it's hard not to focus on what would happen if things went wrong. At best, you'd be killed instantly. At worst, permanently disabled. Your brain, the same brain that holds your thoughts, feelings and memories, the people that you've loved and the places that you've been, the same brain that your friends and family inexplicably adore no matter what strange or annoying things it may instruct the body it's connected to to do, that brain will be spread upon the pavement of this Brisbane highway for about a kilometre southbound. Is this really what money's worth? Is it really worth risking your life in order to make a few measly dollars? If I could have one wish, it would be that my nephew never becomes a tow truck driver. In fact, I scarcely believe I'd wish it on my worst enemy. As time dragged on, the long hours were beginning to affect me. I had no time for my friends or family anymore. All I did was work and alcohol started to become my only means of escape. It wasn't just me who was feeling the pinch though. My dog was having an equally difficult time coping with my new profession and she decided to act out in the only way a canine knows how. Clearly she wanted to make her displeasure known and she certainly achieved that goal. Hmm, holy shit. Was this you? My rare days off no longer matched up with my friends' schedules. The more socially isolated I became, the more I yearned for human affection. I might have been pudgy and unfit, but a single young man still has his needs. Fortunately, there's an app dedicated for that. 
I knew that being a tow truck driver isn't a particularly glamorous job, but as kids we're constantly told that the sum of your personality is always more important than the sum of your bank account. Surely that can't have been a lie. So anyway, he gets back to his house, he opens the door, um, his father looks at him like, what the fuck happened to you, you're covered in shit, and the little boy goes, I got a fuck for a duck, I got a duck for a fuck, and I got 25 bucks for a fucked up duck. <laughs> That's a good joke, right? <laughs> like, um, yeah, not everybody uh, finds that joke funny. So, uh, what do you do for work? I've just became a paramedic. Yeah, it's um, it's been hard, but hopefully it'll be really worth it. What do you do? Mm, I drive a tow truck. And um, what does that entail? I drive a truck around and pick up broken cars. Um, don't mind, I'm just going to quickly pop to the bathroom. If that's okay, I'll be two minutes. Sure. Yep, no worries, I'll, I'll, I'll be here. Twenty-three fifty an hour. Holy fuck! Fuck! I get paid more at McDonald's. Fuck. It was shitting me now. I spent all my time at work and bugger all of it on pleasure. I was helping other people, but I certainly wasn't doing myself any favours. I wasn't studying to be a doctor or a psychologist, nor was I working with the down and outs or the misfits helping them to improve their lives. I had become a down and out myself, risking my life every day for nothing but pennies and sadness. When I had the chance to be, I was miserable, and if I was too busy for that, I was downright rude. After only a few months, I didn't want to do this anymore, but I was making such little money that I was locked into it. I had nowhere to go and no way out of the corner I'd backed myself into.
Slowly but surely, I was losing control of my mind. I couldn't think, I couldn't concentrate. I hated my life as a depressed alcoholic truck driver. I had become what I dealt with every day at work, a beaten up wreck, hardly functioning anymore, pulled against his wheel onto a truck and dragged around the city. This wasn't living, it was dying slowly and dying slowly was not my plan when I moved back to Brisbane. I hadn't seen my friends in weeks and I hadn't had sex in months. My weight was rapidly increasing as my mental state faltered. When I was up north, at least I could escape. I could drive to a lonely beach and jump in the ocean. There'd be no one around for miles. I may have been bereft of any sense of purpose, but at least it was calm and quiet. I had the space to figure out how to better myself. In the north, I was sad, but at least I was at peace. In Brisbane, I was sad and in pieces. So you're leaving again. Have you told anybody? No. I think I'm just gonna go. Why? I thought it'd be different this time when I came back. You know, when I was on the road last time, all I wanted was to, to you know, come back and make a home, but I just feel like I'm fucking slowly losing my mind. But you didn't like where you're going last time either. And you came back. Now you're going straight back to where you didn't like. Yeah. I wish there was like a book that just told you how to live life and you just open it up and it, it's just the instructions for how to be a successful person. Oh, we'd all like a book like that. Yeah. But there is professional help out there, Jack, and I personally think you need to get it instead of running away with the problems. That they're just going to run with you and eventually they're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. 
I don't think I'm ever going to get rid of my problems. I don't think any any amount of talking will ever solve well, it might help. what's going on in my yeah, head. It might help though. I think you need to grow up and find what, work out what it is that you need to do, or that what you want to do, so you become a stable person. I don't know, I think I'm just going to go and then see what happens. I think I fucked it up. Well, i sort of shit out. Decide what you want to do. All right, come on, baby. All right, let's go. Ready? Please. Come on. One more time. Come on. No reception. Fucking. Oh! I'm just a poor boy from Nottingham. I had my oh. dreams, but in this world they're gone. Oh, I'm so lonesome on my own Three years on the road Four hundred shows Where do I call home? No place to go Where do I belong? Oh, I'm so lonesome on my own Every day 
Every town has a stranger when I'm around. No sins forgiven. Else bidding me out, always God, always God. He's even left me on my own. Where's God, where's God? He's even left me on my own. I'm just a poor boy from Nottingham. I had my dreams, but in this world they're gone, they're gone. Oh, I'm so lonesome on my own. Oh, I'm so lonesome on my own. Oh, I'm so lonesome on my world.